Apple finally ready to ditch Qualcomm? That's the big question surrounding the iPhone 17 launch. And based on new statements from Qualcomm, the answer might be almost. Apple has been working for years to make its own cellular modem and move away from Qualcomm's technology. And now we're seeing real signs that the change is happening, starting with this year's iPhone 17 series. Let's break down what we know. During Qualcomm's recent earnings call, CFO Akash Pakawala shared an interesting forecast. He said Qualcomm is expecting to be part of only 70% of iPhone 17 shipments. That means Apple is reducing its reliance on Qualcomm, and quite significantly. So, which models will still use Qualcomm modems and which ones will get Apple's new in-house chip? Here's what analysts are guessing. The base iPhone 17 and a brand new model called the iPhone 17 Air will likely use Apple's C1 modem, while the more expensive iPhone 17 Pro and Pro Max will still use Qualcomm's chips for now. This isn't a wild guess either. Apple already tested its C1 modem last year on the iPhone 16e. That was kind of like a pilot run, giving the company a chance to see how the modem performed in real life without risking its flagship models. And according to reports, the C1 modem did pretty well. It wasn't necessarily faster than Qualcomm's version, but it was stable enough and may have even improved battery life. That's likely because Apple can optimize its hardware and software better when both are made in-house. Think of it like what Apple did with its M1 and M2 chips for Macs. The results were a big leap forward, and it's clear Apple wants to apply that same formula to the iPhone. So why not switch all iPhone 17 models to Apple's modem right now? Well, the Pro models are usually the ones power users go for. And since Qualcomm's modems still offer slightly better performance, Apple probably doesn't want to take any chances. At least not yet. The company may want one more year to improve its own chip before making a full transition. Also, the new iPhone 17 Air could be a clever move. It's rumored to replace the current iPhone Plus model and will be thinner and lighter. A slower phone usually means a smaller battery, so Apple may be betting on its in-house modem to help make up for the difference by being more power efficient. There's also a bigger picture here. Apple wants to save money on licensing fees. Qualcomm's patents are expensive, and by building its own modem, Apple keeps more control over the tech and the profits. This is similar to what Samsung does with its Exynos chips and modems. In fact, Samsung even supplies modems to Google for some Pixel phones. So this move by Apple isn't just about saving cash, it's also about being more independent and designing every part of the iPhone experience. Now, here's where things could get even more interesting. If all goes well with the iPhone 17 launch, we could see every model in the iPhone 18 lineup using Apple's own modem next year. That would be a big deal and a major blow to Qualcomm. After all, Apple is one of Qualcomm's biggest customers in the smartphone space. So to sum it up, Apple's in-house modem is slowly making its way into more devices, starting with the iPhone 17 base model and iPhone 17 Air. Can Samsung's slimmest phone yet beat Apple's next sleek iPhone before it even arrives? That's the big question. After a new leak just confirmed one of the Galaxy S25 Edge's most talked about features, its powerful camera setup. And if this turns out to be true, the upcoming iPhone 17 Air might already have a serious challenge on its hands. We've been hearing a lot about the Galaxy S25 Edge lately. From leaked images and rumored specs to details about its ultra-thin body, most of what we know has come from unofficial sources. But now, a regulatory database listing seems to back up the earlier rumors, especially the ones about its cameras. According to the listing, the Galaxy S25 Edge will have the same 200 megapixel main camera that's used on the top of the line Galaxy S25 Ultra. Yes, the exact same one. This is a big deal because Samsung's 200 megapixel camera has already proven itself. It outperformed the iPhone 16 Pro Max and Google Pixel 9 in recent camera tests. Having the same camera in a much slimmer phone could make the S25 Edge AE, favorite for users who want both style and performance. Alongside the 200 megapixel camera, there's also said to be a 12 megapixel camera, most likely an ultra wide lens. This is probably the same sensor found on the Galaxy S25 and S25 Plus. While it's not the 50 megapixel ultra wide from the ultra model, it's still solid for most photography needs. The phone is also expected to have a front camera with Samsung's S5K3LU sensor. This one uses a 1 tart 3.2 inch sensor size, which is typical for front cameras in this range. All this means we now have a pretty complete picture of the S25 Edge's camera system. And even though it only has two rear cameras, 
The quality could be surprisingly high, especially for such a thin phone. As for the launch, rumors point to an official announcement on May 13th. The phone might first go on sale in China and Korea on May 23rd, followed by a US release on May 30th. That's not too far off, and with more leaks pouring in, the hype is only getting stronger. Apart from cameras, the S25 Edge is expected to come with the powerful Snapdragon 8 Elite processor and 12 GBs of RAM. This means you'll get flagship level, performance even in a slim device. The phone is also expected to feature a 6.7 inch display and a body that's just 5.85 millimeters thick, making it one of the slimmest phones on the market today. But Samsung won't be alone in this new, slim flagship space. Apple is also rumored to be working on a thin model called the iPhone 17 Air. A dummy unit of the phone has already leaked online. And while it looks sleek, it may only come with a single rear camera. Have you ever wished your phone camera could work more like a professional one, where you can swap out lenses depending on the shot you want? That idea might soon become a reality. A newly uncovered patent suggests that Samsung is working on something pretty exciting, a modular camera system for smartphones. Instead of being stuck with just the camera your phone comes with, this system could let you attach different types of lenses directly to your device. Think of zoom lenses, ultra-wide options, or even ones for close-up shots. It's the kind of flexibility that photographers get from DSLRs, and now it might be heading to our pockets. This new idea showed up in a patent filed with the WIPDO database, which gives us a sneak peek into what Samsung might be planning. The design breaks down into four main parts. The phone's body, a separate lens you can attach, an image sensor, and a small motor that can help adjust parts of the setup. In simple words, you'd be able to snap a lens onto your phone, and it would instantly be ready to take a different kind of photo. Now, modular camera systems aren't entirely new. Vio recently introduced the X200 Ultra, a phone that supports a magnetic telephoto lens converter. When it's attached, it boosts the zoom capabilities up to around 8.7 times optical zoom, which is close to 200 millimeters, something you usually only get with a big, expensive camera. That shows there's already a market for this kind of thing. But Samsung's take on the idea might go even further. The patent also shows a ring on the lens itself, which may allow manual control, possibly for zooming or focusing. This could give users more hands-on control, similar to what you'd get with a regular camera lens. If done right, this could seriously change the way we use phone cameras. Another cool feature mentioned in the patent is automatic lens recognition. This might work through magnets or RFID technology, which would allow the phone to instantly detect which lens is attached. The phone could then adjust camera settings to match the lens, all without you having to do anything. That's a big step toward making smartphone photography more advanced while keeping it easy for everyone to use. While there are already third-party lenses out there like the ones from Moment, they often need special phone cases and can be a bit clunky to use. Samsung's concept, on the other hand, seems to be fully built into the phone's design. That could make it feel more natural and less like an add-on. The only downside is that it might limit these lenses to certain Galaxy models unless Samsung finds a way to make them work with different devices. There's also a chance Samsung could take a more flexible route, selling the lenses separately as add-ons. That would mean they wouldn't have to redesign every phone model and users could buy only the lenses they want. They could even include a grip or mount to make the lens attachment easier. This approach could keep costs down while still offering better photo options. Of course, it's important to remember that patents don't always lead to real products. Tech companies often file them to protect their ideas and many of those ideas never reach the market. But the fact that Samsung is even exploring modular camera tech shows that they're thinking ahead about how phone cameras can evolve. Imagine having a lens in your bag or pocket, ready to snap onto your phone whenever you want a better shot. You would need to carry a heavy camera or worry about switching between devices. It could completely change how we think about mobile photography. If you like this update and want to keep up with the latest tech news, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.